And we are live. Welcome, brothers, to another show. Today I have a good friend of mine on today, Al Grease, legendary filmmaker of the film Frustrated. How you doing today, brother? Oh, man, I'm awesome, man. I'm out here, I'm out here real right now, so you know I'm having a good time, man. So I'm, I'm awesome right now. Excellent, excellent, man. How is Rio right now with all the COVID restrictions and everything? Uh, it's the city is open, it's vibrant, man. People are moving. Um, you see, you, you see, half of the population have the mask on, half of them don't have it on. Uh, but uh, it, it's vibrant, man. Everything is kicking. I'm, I had a good time. So most of the uh, most of the stuff is open. People are back on the beaches. The clubs are open. Restaurants are open. So uh, it's it, it, it's vibrant again, man. Nice, nice. And you have to take a PCR test to enter the country? Yeah, I had to take a PCR test and also a health declaration, which is something simple, man, filled out uh, by the government that just asks you if you had COVID and don't have COVID, this and that. Yeah, I filled that out, man. And um, took, took two seconds, man. I took the COVID test and um, that was it. That was the only requirement. So it came in and, and just leaving. You only need a, uh, uh, it's not a COVID test, it's a stringent test or something like that. And, um, Take one of those tests and you good go back home, man. So it, it I mean for for my experience here, for, for what I had to go through, man, it was worth it. Nice. And how long have you been visiting Rio? Oh man. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a what they call it, old school I'm old school head. I've been mm -hmm. coming out here since maybe early two thousand, man, like two thousand and two, I think two thousand two, two thousand four, back in the club health days. Mm, okay. That was a perfect name for the club, man, because when I needed some help, I know where to go to, man. So I was getting on. <laughs> right, right, man. Um, it's beautiful. And you currently in Rio de Janeiro. Is it the rainy season or is it the hot season out there right now? It, it, well, it's the winter season. Mm -hmm. so okay. When it's winter here, the weather's like bipolar, man. One minute it's, it's nice and sunny, and that's thing you know, it starts raining, and then it'll, it'll go clear back up, and then it'll rain and clear back up. So. I, I, I'd rather deal with the rain than I, than to deal with the snow. And uh, mm -hmm. so it, it, it rained today, but yesterday was nice and sunny, man. And just did the um, it took got some footage from the helicopter tour. Mm -hmm. and so you know, we I'm in the process of doing frustrated three out here too. So I'm just gathering footage, some B roll uh, today. Unfortunately, I couldn't do anything because of the rain. Mm -hmm. But for the most part of it, I've been out here for about three weeks now. So the most part of it, man, maybe two or three days has been bad, but the rest of the days has been nice and sunny. And then winter is like 75 degrees, mm -hmm. 77 degrees. That's winter to them. So oh, wow. I can deal with that winter all day long. You know, we back in the States, that that, that cold, especially on the East Coast, when it gets cold and that, that wind and that hulk come out, man, you know, you need all kind of wind, mm -hmm. and all that shit. So. I hear I can still wear shorts and t-shirts and stuff, and they, they look at you like you're crazy because it's uh, uh it's winter and they you know they got their little stuff on, but shit, it's nice, it's beautiful out here. Nice. You got the East Coast. Where are you from, brother? I'm originally from New York, man. Mm -hmm. New York. I spent time in in Atlanta as well. Spent about yeah, yeah about ten, twelve years in uh, in Atlanta. Came back to New York, so I'm currently residing in New York. And uh, next stop, you know, my next stop is, is home. It's here for me. So I'm just uh, putting some stuff together. Come back out here. And I know that's a big adjustment from New York to Rio, right? You know what, man? And looking at the, I've been on some real estate tours. <clears throat> People take me around, show me some properties and stuff. And one of my biggest concerns anytime they show me some property is that, man, the closet is too small. You know, this is too small. This is too small. And, you know, then I you go through the thought process where I'm not bringing winter boots out here. I'm not bringing big winter coats out here. You're not bringing out, um, you know, you're not bringing all that stuff out here. So basically, you know, shorts and T-shirts and maybe some polo shirts. And, if you know, if you're going out and it's maybe a few uh, button-down shirts. But, you know, the, the culture here and the way of living here is totally opposite. So I don't, I don't need all that stuff. I don't need all that stuff. I don't need all those shoes, man. I hear this the, the, the flip-flop game. Get you some slippers, some flip-flops on. You could. You could. <laughs> I don't I don't need, you know, all the Jordans and all the all the pairs of kicks and all that shit, man. Get you a couple pair of flip-flops and all that stuff. So I like that. But you don't need all that, you don't need all the access. So, nice, uh, nice, nice. Yeah. And let's go back, let's go backwards, brother. I want to start at the beginning. Uh what first you First, got you interested in uh, filmmaking. Um, 
it, it was uh, I was in Atlanta and you know mm-hmm. just had some my, some you know uh, my ideas. I'm, I'm left-handed man. I've always been a creative person. Mm-hmm. It was looking you know got intrigued and and and, and uh, really tell me well let me go back a little bit. What really first got me. What really first got me was I went to go see Do the Right Thing. Spike Lee. Spike Lee joined when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And, so fascinated that he was actually telling a story that took place in Brooklyn, and he was telling he was telling our story, and I was like, "Wow, you, you can do that! I didn't know you can you know you can make movies about us and and, and, and had it be put on the big screen." I must have seen uh, "Do the Right Thing" about ten times, man. I, I was I was in New York. My brother took me to see it. I was in high school, uh, a freshman year in high school. And um, I was going to school upstate New York in Amherst, New York. So for the summer holidays, I would come back and spend time with my family. So my older brother uh, took me to go see it. So you want to go to movies? He took me to see it, man. And I begged him to take me to see it like four or five times. And when I got back up to Amherst, all my friends up there, I was like, yo, we need to go see Do the Right Thing. We need to go see Do the Right Thing. And um, something about that flick, man, it just intrigued me the fact that, you know, he was telling our stories and, uh, and, and it could be told. Mm-hmm. And, I got older and uh, was out in Atlanta. You know, I was out in Atlanta during, you know, 95, 96, the golden age, golden era of hip hop, and things were big and big, uh, things were popping off. And uh, mm-hmm. a lot, a little bit slower than New York, and, and a lot, uh, and, and, and the Metro City thing. So he was running into people. You can, you can run into people and talk to people. And I got, a, got the buzz for it, but I didn't do anything with it. Mm-hmm. Didn't happen until I actually, um, I actually took a, I was in finance. I took a mm-hmm. job out in Alaska. I took a job out in Alaska and I had a client uh, by the name of Janet Burke and, and uh, I went to it in an accident. So I had to take some paperwork over to our house to have a sign it. And I saw all these scripts and, you know, plaques from TriStar pitches. And I was like, wow, you know, you, you in the movie business? She said, oh, TriStar, you know, send me scripts and stuff out here to read. And, um, you know, I was, I told her I was interested in, in learning how to write. And she was like, oh, for real? And she started breaking it down and told me what I needed to do, what I needed to do, what kind of process to me. And we worked on a uh, screenplay. One of the first ideas I had for a screenplay, and we, we, worked, we worked on it. And she took me through each step, uh, getting the script where, getting the, the, the uh, getting script where, getting the process and all that stuff. We worked out about a good, I don't know. Okay, six, seven months. I mean, just right, right, and going back and forth. And I was just like, nah, stop with it. She was like, nope, ain't good enough. Get back to this and let me know how the scene's supposed to go. Every third scene, you got to have something that pops. Every third scene, she changed the trajectory of the, of the film, the way the film is going and all that stuff. And I took off from there, man. Nice, nice. And uh, shout out to Roller Tape for the five super chat. I appreciate that, brother. He said, salute BMT and Al Greaves. Appreciate that, uh, my brother Rich. So what, what was your first film project? Uh, the first written one, I, when with Jenny, I, I apologize, man. Somebody asked me a question, too. I couldn't I can't even recall the name of it. Um, mm-hmm. About two, two cast that grew up together, man, and just took different different routes in life. And both were, uh, you know, educated. One got educated, one didn't. But he, worked, he kept working and grinding and, and, and worked his way up. And the other guy took the kind of the fast, you know, Got greedy and got involved in some stuff that brought him down. Boy, was there to pick him back up at the end. Now that was the first one that I, that I actually wrote. Um, actually, first uh, when I decided to get behind the camera, and once I learned how to get it, so and I went through some um, some obstacles, man, of trying to get people on board to sell the screenplay with and, and try to get it done, and then got frustrated with that. No pun intended, but decided to take on projects that I could handle myself. So I shot this one called um, uh, Top Boosters. Top Boosters. <laughs> Dudes that was boosting out in New York and how they was able to, you know, hone their skills and, and, and some of the skills, some of the skills of the trade. And uh, it, it was awful, man. I'd rather show you my credit report, man, than show you that trick. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the first one I really, you know, just went out there, got the camera, man, and, and um, did the thing and uh they it just wound up being a disaster man i thought it was i thought it was just a complete disaster and, and um I showed it to some cats in atlanta they they loved it but i i, I couldn't find myself to release it i said man, this is trash right here man. this is trash i could do better than that man 
I could do better. So I held off on that, uh, got involved in another project, wasn't satisfied with that, and stumbled upon, uh, out of nowhere, out of the play, out of the blue, man, I did Frustrated. I wasn't planning on doing Frustrated. <laughs> uh, just happened to take a trip out to Brazil for <laughs> recreational purposes, first time out. And when I got back to the States, I was invited my cousin out in D.C., man, uh, Bigstown. He has a, he throws an annual barbecue there. So, you know, he's always one of the guys to come out, family, especially family get together out there. So we came out there and he had a brother. I heard a brother on the phone speaking Portuguese. Hmm. He got off the phone. I asked him, I said, man, you know, you Brazilian? And he was like, no, man, I uh, took the language. I have, a, uh, I have plans of taking a trip out there. And I shared my experience that I just, I just came from there, man. And I shared my experience with him. And then he introduced me to the, um, the Essence article. And he was like, what do you think about the Essence article? I'm like, I don't think about that. I haven't read it. And he was like, I, you know, I don't read Essence. He was like, oh, man, let me send it to you. And he sent it to me. I read the article. And it was just totally the opposite of what I just experienced. <laughs> and I kind of wrote it off as just trash. And then he hit me back. And... Uh, very intelligent brother, Dr. Uh, Larry Davis. He hit me back and he was like, you know, what do you think, man? What's your thoughts on that? And I was like, hey, it's trash. So he was like, you should do something. Your cousin told me you're a filmmaker. You should do something about it. And I said, you know, maybe, maybe you got a point, man. And I uh, did some research. I came back out to Brazil, did some research first. That's when I hooked up with the big homie, um, Johnny Johnson. Big homie Johnny Johnson. Uh, he took me on his wing, showed me around uh, Brazil, showed me different spots. And uh, was breaking it down to me, and um, of course, John Thompson was a big help to me as well. Because uh, he'd been out here for 28 years, and he gave me some references, some people I could talk to, and uh, came back and uh, started writing it. You know, started writing it, and did some more research and put it all together. And um, you know, that's how that that's how frustrated came about. Excellent, excellent. And do you remember some of the bullet points in the Essence article of what they were saying? Basically, they were saying anybody anybody who, who came out to Brazil to travel or brothers that go anywhere to travel, basically, it was the sex tourism. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And the guy, uh, Dr. I think Jacani, uh, I can't recall his name right now. Mm -hmm. The guy who wrote the article for him, um, Dr. Cobb, Dr. Cobb, um, um, basically stayed in, in, in one city block. Mm -hmm. He went on one city block and he just stayed there and hung out in a, at a popular basically uh, from, from there do his own assessment about what was going on in brazil mm -hmm. I came back before i even decided to film i came back i, I went out to middle Roy, i went out to the northern part hung out in the southern part visit all and then you find guys that relocated that moved that got married uh um that were that were enjoying life and and, and, and when you get out of the situation that was going in New York, but he just focused on um, brothers that was in transit and, and the tourist spot, and they had the night, uh, the happening nightclub had the helpers open. So, he just mm -hmm. yeah, so it's like if I ask you to summarize New York City, what New York is about, or we both uh, from a, from a time in Atlanta, and you just went to 112 and said, This is what Atlanta is about, and this is the dudes that that's not Atlanta. That's not Atlanta. You got you got families in the suburbs that are doing well. You got you got families all over. You got people in business. So it's not just you know, defining the whole culture by a nightclub, a popular nightclub. So mm -hmm. I, it was biased. I felt the whole thing was biased, and you know, it led me to do some more research. And I got the writing and, and, and put it all together. And um, was crazy about it when I was done. And um, anybody know anything about filming? When I came out to uh, Brazil, I had to, I had to do guerrilla filming have permits to go film anywhere i asked people to let me um use their establishments to let me in the owner of being pataka which was a popular nightclub at the time he uh not a nightclub a restaurant he let me film in there and was catching brothers that were on vacation that was in transit so when you find some case and you want to interview them you got to get them right then and there because if you let them go you might not see them again and i have you know what's app wasn't popping like that so <laughs> you just i just had to get them right there and the guy let me clear the tables out, but you know, he told me he couldn't turn the soccer game off, so he still had the noise from the soccer game on. And some of the uh, didn't have a chance to scout the location, so the lighting and some of the technical issues I found issues with, and almost didn't release it based on that. And I was done with it, you know. I'm real hard on myself, and um, but man, you know, I can't, I can't.
can't, I can't, I can't release it. Mm-hmm. Older brother, I showed, I had a viewing in New York for both family, friends, and family and friends. And my older brother watched it. You know, he, he didn't say nothing. He just looked at it. And he came back to me like two weeks later. He's like, "Yo, whatever happened to that, to that joint, that frustrated joint you did?" I said, "Oh man, that's, that shit over there in the drive, man. I'm, I'm not doing with that, man." He's like, "Man, you don't release that, I'll beat your ass." <laughs> <laughs> Well, you crazy man that shit is that shit is epic man you got to release that nah i got some technical issues man nobody give a shit about that man the content is strong that message resonated with me man i was watching that shit i was like, baby bro on or something so i decided to uh, uh take it to a film festival went out to atlanta went back out to atlanta i knew some cats and filming and, and uh, my man lynn gibson who was running the p street film festival i, I know i know lynn gibson yeah, you know Lynn, so yeah, yeah. Lynn, Lynn, as a matter of fact, I did, I went out, I did a private viewing for Lynn, uh, damn, what's, what's old girl that used to be on, um, Steve Harvey's show, uh, Cedric Entertainer's girlfriend, can't think of her name. I can't think she, of her name, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, she played his girlfriend on the show, but she was running some, um, some thing out there, man, and they invited me in, and so I had a nice viewing out there. So Lynn would watch that, she, Lynn watched it, and Lynn was like, I don't know what to tell you, Reed, but you know, come on, come on come to the film festival man mm-hmm. went to took it to the film festival and uh was disappointed because they gave me uh a shitty start time and you know I'm like damn man why are you putting me up at eight o'clock in the morning nobody up at eight o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> oh the uh p street film festival did that yeah he put me in there. <laughs> put me at eight o'clock in the morning right in the morning on a saturday right. mm-hmm. he was like man i didn't do it grease man you know Mm-hmm. People that run that part of it, man, some chicks and shit in there, man. They wasn't mm-hmm. real happy with the product. So, uh, man, what the hell that's, I got to do with it? That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. How, how was the response from the females uh, at the film so, festival? I just told you, yo, be fair with it. And, uh, mm-hmm. you, you know, I'll make it up to you, that kind of shit, you know. So, mm-hmm. you know, Lynn Saw spoke to shit, man. He uh, agrees, you know, I'll make it up to you. So, mm-hmm. I went out there, man, rolled with it. And, um, I had I had a nice little I had a nice little group. Mm. Like, wow! So I, I just before it started, it was like maybe like seven fifty nine, seven fifty eight. I saw this brother walking walking around, and I was like, "Hey, bro, how you doing, man? Uh, I'll be honored if you come in, man, and, and watch my film and give me some feedback." You know, he's like, "What's your film?" I'm frustrated here. You know, you had to you have to have a little poster outside. And he was right, like, right. Ah, okay. I'm not sure what I want to watch, man, but you know, I'll, I'll come in and check it out, man. I'll come in and check it out. Oh, thank you, thank you, man. So the film went on, and after it went off, you know, you got to stand in front of the podium and you know answer some questions and Q and A. And before I could say anything, man, the brother just interrupted me, man, and told me, "Thank you, man. Thank you for bringing me in here. I appreciate it. I've been going through some things in my life, and I didn't know what to do. And if y'all think I'm bullshitting, he reached, he pulled out his phone. He said, while the film was on, I just booked my flight. I'm out mm. of here. I'm out of here, bro. Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And they were like, whoa. And then, you know, we had a, we had a vibrant discussion, man. And mm-hmm. um, some of the younger girls in the crowd thought I was attacking them. And, if, you know, you saw the film. I, I gave a female perspective in the film. So it wasn't you biased. Did. And it wasn't biased. And then the older women in, in, that was there and kind of, you know, put the younger girls in check for me. And they were mm-hmm. like, you know, one lady stood up. She said, listen, I own my own, I own my own business. I make, I make, I make over uh, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. My husband is a janitor. When I met my husband, he was a janitor, and I wouldn't trade him for nothing in the world. And, and, you know, now he he owns his own janitorial service. Mm-hmm. We, I, you know, the cooperation there. You know, it, and, and she said, you know, uh, the young chick stood up. She was like, yeah, I know. I was interested in the UPS driver, and uh, my my coworkers told me, you know, he worked for UPS. You know, he ain't got no future. Leave him alone. Something she regretted because she she was into the guy and she couldn't wait for him to come in and deliver the packages and stuff and her girlfriends would stay away from him and just tell him basically you know he a UPS dude he ain't worth nothing she regretted that. she regretted that so uh, crazy part of that whole thing man was uh, after the, you know after the, all the viewings and stuff they had the award show and I had the only uh, documentary in that category so once you you know the films if if, the, if that's the only film in the category I went by default. Mm-hmm. Okay. Best documentary, best documentary of, of the festival was mine. So I, I saw Lynn. I was like, "Cause you got to go to the awards dinner." And I think Vivica Fox and uh, 
Amari Chadwick was there, the dude from Power, and all of them. And uh, I got to chop it up. Real cool dude, man. He was full power. We, we chopped it up, man. And uh, I was like, yeah, man, I got the film. I, I went. And then was like, oh, man, I don't know about that. So what you mean you don't know about it? I went by the fall. I win. I have the only documentary. The only doc here. I win. And he was like, nah, I agree. You know, they, they took it out. I said, who took it out? You run the show, man. What do you mean they took it out? So kind of boycotted the dinner. I didn't want to go. I asked for a refund. I wanted my money back. Mm-hmm. And money back. But then I stopped. I was I stopped and I, was, I started thinking. I was like, damn, maybe I got something now. If I'm irritating people and people getting upset, maybe I have something. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, that's when I really decided to go ahead and release it and get the response from that. So, mm-hmm. Me and Lynn, we cool. Me and Lynn, cool. I don't want to think Lynn, if you see this thing, I ain't cool with him. Me and Lynn, we go back and forth daily basis. He invited me out to some uh, premieres and stuff, man. So I've been, I'm big friends of, I'm big friends of the uh, Peace Street Film uh, Festival. Yeah, so that's that's how, that's how I decided to go ahead and, and let that thing fly. And what and what year was this? I don't know, two, two seven? Two oh eight? Okay, okay. Two seven, two oh eight, somewhere around there. And how does that make you feel to make a project like that in 2007? And it's all with the whole Kevin Samuels, you know, uh, getting big and getting very popular now that all these issues are not coming to the forefront of something that you did almost a decade ago. Uh, I feel good, man. Just let me know I was ahead of my time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, you're ahead of your time, but that was my purpose. Um, uh, you have a lot of get, a lot of cats going back to reflect. They listen to Kevin Samuels and they go back, and uh, some of them reflect to see you know where it started. And my name pops up. Mm-hmm. Uh, my name pops up, so I've been getting uh, a lot of requests for interviews. Uh, Want to talk to me about you know about the whole frustrated thing and about the film and when he decided to do the film. So you know, um, I was just a little bit ahead of my time, but you know, I'm still relevant. If anybody, you know, when they start uh, bringing up these issues, especially frustrated too, when I what I did about the whole child support issues and, and telling brothers how to avoid those pitfalls and all that stuff, and it's, don't date women with, with single, uh, don't date women with kids, don't date single moms. And in the beginning, they thought I was being harsh, but now they see the reality of it and how you can get hurt by it. So uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm I think I'm still relevant in the game, and um, in, in far as the information I provide. And cats want, you know, they always want to talk to me, man. So uh, mm-hmm. it happens sometimes, you know. You, you know, uh, he, sometimes you come along at the right time. Sometimes you, you know, you're a trailblazer. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned frustrated too. What year did you come out with frustrated too? And what motivates you to the, the follow up? Uh, frustrated too came out. I think two, two, fifteen, two, sixteen, somewhere around there. And okay. uh, it was it was crazy? I was at Starbucks. I was at Starbucks mm-hmm. and. Um, in upstate New York, and mm-hmm. uh, one of the guys that's in, in the film named Garrett, uh, for, uh, up, up in um, up in upstate New York. So white guy, the white guy that was in the film, man, and um, I was standing there getting some coffee, and I see this guy staring at me. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, he's staring at me, and you know, I'm trying to play it off. And, you know, it's, it's starting to irritate me a little bit. So you know, I kind of, you know, oh bro, everything good? Cause you know how shit go down to Starbucks for us. You know, we just can't get our little coffee and walk out without some shit popping off. So I'll take it. You know, why, why is this dude looking at me like this? And he was like, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stare at you, man. You just look familiar. They look familiar. He said, I saw this uh, documentary online, man, um, called Frustrated. And I was like, wow, you watch Frustrated? He was like, yeah, man. I said, I'm frustrated too, man. And I, I said, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm the guy that did that film, man. And uh, he was like, you know, can you sit down? You got a minute, man? I sat down and he told me a story. As it relate to having his kids taken away from him, uh, paying X amount, exorbitant amounts of child support, having to sleep in his truck, and, mm-hmm. and the whole uh, stuff he was going through. And he was like, "Man, you know, uh, I know you, you know your you, audience predominantly black, and but you know I know they go through this kind of stuff too, man. Would you be interested? I think it's something you should you should look into." Mm-hmm. And I did. And when I looked into it and did the research, and I was like, "Wow, you know." Brothers don't know a lot of this information. So as it relates to traveling, uh, keeping your money with you, man, and, and especially dating dating single moms, how it, it could be hazardous to you. <laughs> hazardous to your health. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so uh, I looked into it, did the research, man, and, and uh, I did it, and, and I put it out. And uh, 
I think what, what hindered that project a little bit was the fact that top guys from bootlegging like they did the first one. The, oh yeah, yeah. The first one was all over the place, man. And then I mm -hmm. through, the, through the Vimeo where you could do it, the digital download, and, and you could watch it, and that's it, man. And we cut off, so just to protect my product. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in lights of uh, frustrating three coming out, I'm gonna have uh, release. Uh, release, I'm gonna have it released, shown, and give it away. I'm gonna give it away, man, in certain groups and stuff. And I'm watching if you want to leave a donation mm -hmm. in the process. I'll let them do that there. But uh, it's, it's just information I feel that needs to get out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, if guys enjoy that kind of information, enjoy the product, just support it. Just support it so we can continue going. Man. Hey, you, ain't, you ain't got five, you ain't got ten dollars because of. And all that shit for Wakanda and Batman and Spider Man and all that shit. You, you, you got you got ten for me too. Exactly, exactly, man. Um, when you start to release it, let me know and we'll do a promo for it, man. We do a video, and I'm sure BMT will support. Right, fellas? If you if you gonna support Al Grease's new film, hit one in the comment section for me. The Frustrated Three. And what's the topic of Frustrated Three? Uh, if you don't mind you know, me asking, right? I don't want to give away my secret sauce, man. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Frustrated, frustrated, you know, I turned it kind of like into a series. So it broke it down like in the books, like different chapters. Mm -hmm. so for chapter one, we got that, you know, Black Men in Brazil, chapter two, your old mom and daddy. And, mm -hmm. and you know, we got chapter three. So we're going to revisit um, uh, not all the issues, but some of the issues because now you see more brothers getting out. And a lot of it is due to how, how the economy changed. Mm -hmm. so Change has, has a, a direct effect on families and, and relationships. A lot of us maybe didn't realize that, or see, uh, you know, I looked at when when, when uh, America's uh, factories, you know, you had brothers um who were barely high school educated that can go get a factory job and, take, and buy a home and take care of the kids and send the kids off to college. Hmm. You know what I mean? So when that changed and it went into automation, and then they pushed education, and that's when you see women start to flourish. Women started going in and flourishing, and then that took a big toll on relationship. But then it came into the, the whole women's independent movement. I don't need a man; I make my own. Now, during COVID, now and especially COVID, and small business is taking a hit. Now they're starting to shift again. Now, mm -hmm. but involved into into the uh, into the forex trading, the crypto, mm -hmm. uh, 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 stock market. So now when I first would come out to Brazil, I would see brothers that, you know, I'd say I here for two weeks, I got to get back. Now brothers are staying out six months, six mm -hmm. months six to a year, because now you can work from home. And with the technology, with the technology and, and especially with YouTube and brothers is able now to make money and not to get that American dollar and not be at home. You don't have to be at home. So imagine if you were living in, you know, if you wanted to live in, in Colombia, you want to live in Brazil, Costa Rica, wherever you wanted to be, and you could bring mm -hmm. that American dollar with you. So brothers not looking at retirement anymore. Like I gotta wait till I retire. Now I can leave now and make money. Like that now. Good point. Yeah, they, that's a big game changer. So we're focused on looking, taking a look at taking a uh, look into the um, economics of it now. The direct yeah. in the economics and really looking at what they call the black community now, and how we the black community. Now you know what, brother? As you can see, all the ones we're definitely going to support. We definitely going to support because. I watched your movie and it definitely changed my life. As a matter of fact, before I saw your movie, I wasn't thinking about traveling Brazil at all. I was just a frustrated black man in America, kind of tired of the dating scene, kind of opted out, but didn't really confirm that I opted out. But I was pretty much done uh, when I first saw your film, Frustrated. And what helped me even more was joining your Facebook group, The Black Man's Option. Uh, uh, rest in peace to the brother Charles Tower. And I actually was able to connect with him down there in Rio uh, a few months before he passed. And that was a, we had a really good conversation, man. So it was your film, Frustrated, that kind of put the seeds. And I think for a lot of brothers, it put the seeds because we're not thinking about travel. We're not thinking about Brazil. Uh, until we see a visual, you know, uh, until we see a visual. And then by you intervening, interviewing the sisters, it was able to confirm what we had already been thinking about how they think right like okay in order for me to date you even though you're a school teacher i have to be making this amount of money you're right you know even if i make a little bit more money that's not going to be enough and as you can see with the whole kevin samuels thing that's what really explaining. it's almost like some of the sisters are just delusional in their thinking when it comes to dating a man right now uh 
And I think frustrated was the first thing that I actually seen that confirmed that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, you can see now, you know, he, he, he's doing an excellent job of pointing that out, how delusional they are. And it, what they, you know, for me, it's like the entitlements there, and they feel you have to accept that. Mm -hmm. This is this is all you have. This is who we are, and you have to accept this. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 frustrated when I put out the you know the, the part where I, I put the passport in there, the importance of passport, how easy it is to get, and then brothers find out, uh oh. I don't have to accept this. I, I could leave. Wait, they have planes that leave every day somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then still, most brothers were still a little hesitant to travel alone when you speak of uh, going to Brazil. And they're like, I can't go out there by myself. Different language. Not as too far. Or even going to Colombia, any places. And then for brothers like yourself and, 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 and the good brother Charles Tyler, man, forming that group. Uh, Charles put that group together based, you know, based on my work. But Brothers found the found the place where they can come together and discuss these issues and plan trips together. Mm -hmm. So they got the fear of it. So you say, hey brother, we're gonna plan a trip and you know we have boots on the ground and we're gonna come out here and and, and in the beginning stages of it, Tom, um, you, you know he was uh, uh, he was uh, I don't want to say influenced, but he was riding with John Thompson. He was riding with John Thompson at the time, so he had boots on the ground and then it, it elevated to other cats coming in, and finding out that actually live here, brother Raphael. And all these guys that live here so you had boots on the ground so brothers felt real comfortable with coming out because you had guys to show them where to go where not to go and, and help them help them uh, uh, move through, through it and so it started growing and it still continue to grow man we I'm, I'm out here in brazil now we just had 30 brothers out out here man even during the COVID uh, uh era 30 brothers still came out man we showed them a good time moved them around showed them different stuff and they enjoyed it, man. So it's continuing to grow, man. So once brothers find out that they didn't have to be uh, fearful about uh, traveling anymore, and they had groups like BMT, BMO, they were, they were you know, I'm, you took brothers out too. I think mm -hmm. you took, took plenty of brothers out, man, and, and they started enjoying life. It's a game changer. So when they come back, you know, I I, I promote that. Listen, you don't need you don't need the Jordans, you don't need Louis Vuitton, you don't need all the high end shit. You can mm -hmm. save the bread and you can enjoy you can uh, have a better lifestyle traveling abroad plus your money automatically multiplies and you can and you can have a good time so all that stuff is not needed and that's what yeah, i realized man I, shit, I shop at target now getting some goddamn snoopy shirts and shit i'm good to go mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. at the end of the day i'm the prize they, they waiting to see me there you go yeah man exactly um you know i just saw a story that o'shea did O'Shea Dude Jackson did. I saw you was on his show as well. Shout out to O'Shea Dude Jackson. Um, about the basketball player, James Harden, paying uh, Salty, a female rapper, $100,000 for a date to go out with him, basically. And you see brothers like that, you just be like, does he not know? Like, how does he not know in 2021 to travel the world and expand your options? This guy with all this money. I mean, you're just like a waste of bread. And you got guys like us who travel the world and getting women that look like saute like they're 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 adjustable five or six overseas you know yeah, you know i don't know how true that story is i think mm -hmm. it's the, he tried to cash app i don't know if cash app like, allowed you to send a hundred thousand dollars in nah, mm -hmm. i don't i don't know uh when i thought you know it it it, it was um you know it, it reminded me of that phrase a fool and his money assumed departed mm -hmm. you know, and, and why why i don't need to sit down I don't understand it, man. I, I, I'm trying to put my words together, man. But to send somebody a hundred thousand dollars for a date, mm -hmm. for a date, I don't, I don't understand it, man. And you know, I take a hundred thousand dollars ahead, multiply that shit five times, and got me a nice villa on top of, you know, sitting on top high up in the city, and shit, she'll come for mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. I have to get her a couple of guananas and shit, and I'm good. <laughs> she don't mm -hmm. get, me. get a couple of soft drinks and shit, I'm good. So. You know, some some you know, it's, it's not for everybody. Some brothers, you know, think uh, America's the end all to be all, and you know, if you you know, big fish in a big pond, and you know, you got the money to flash, and you, you know, it ain't nothing. You know, that's 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 on them, man. I couldn't do it. Shit, listen, I'm not taking the chick out in the states for uh, the Applebee's. So you know, she ain't getting no goddamn hundred thousand dollars out of me. I'm not taking them to Applebee's. I'm not taking them. <laughs> and I, you know. Can't do nothing for you. I'm sorry, I can't do nothing for you. Yeah, I want to talk about that. When you first went to Brazil, like I know, 
I went to Brazil for the first time in 2017. Now, I was already pretty much done with dating in the States, but Brazil confirmed it even more. Like, okay, I'm not wasting a penny in the States no more dating because that's money that can go towards my trip. Did that, did that have, the first time you went to Brazil, did that have the same effect on you? Did you automatically go back to America and was like, you're done with the dating game? No, not the first time, man. The first time I was like a kid in a candy store, man. Mm-hmm. Like badass kids, but I was, just, I was just running, ripping and running, running, and I was exhausted. And uh, my first trip here, I actually couldn't wait to get back to uh, get back to the States because I was exhausted. I mean, mm-hmm. no, I was chewing on every piece of candy I could get my hands on. And after a while, like, man, let me get back to the States, go handle some business and shit. And then once I started doing the, doing the research, on the project, on the project I was doing, and I was like, "Wow, yeah, yeah, uh, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much done. <laughs> I'm pretty much done." You know, right. at, the, at the beginning, I wasn't looking; I was just out here to have some fun and get some relaxation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and but once, I, in hindsight, when I started looking back at it, and then going back to my experience I had, and looking what was in front of me, and looking behind me, and looking in front of me, I'm like, "Ah, no." I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I want to play devil's advocate for a little moment here. Um, you know, you got certain dating coaches and everything that will say that, you know, uh, brothers that are traveling just don't have any game. Uh, you know, if they, if you if you take some certain courses or if you take their macking lessons, um, that it helps you get game. You don't have to travel to get women. If you travel and get women, then you you know lame. You don't have no. You're not good with women, stuff like that. What would you say to that? Oh, I don't need games. I don't have mm-hmm. to play games. Mm-hmm. I don't. Have, I don't need. I just pop up. Can you imagine that? You know, the shit they tell you what's required in, in America to maintain a relationship. I don't have to maintain that here. Mm-hmm. I show up, all eyes on me. Mm-hmm. All eyes on me. When I show up. Now I've been coming here for for quite a while, so I developed friendship. Mm-hmm. Of friendship and stuff with people, and, and so when I pop in, even now when I move around, they can tell by my flavor, the way I walk, and the, the, you know, even how I wear my hat or, or whatever I got on that I'm not, I'm not from, I'm not from, I'm not from there, and and the reaction and stuff I get. So I don't, I like, I don't need game, and why would I need game to convince somebody to be with me? Mm-hmm. Why I gotta have game in, in the states to convince somebody to be with me? Now, on the flip side, they say, oh, they're only coming out there because you got money. Exactly. Okay. That's what my next point. Go ahead. Space, you tell me I don't make enough money from you. You told mm-hmm. me to put back at you when, when when I get the meal ticket from Hollywood or when I make enough bread to satisfy you. I come out there, they tell me I got just the right amount of bread. So I I, I don't get it. So I, you know, my bottom line is shit. You know, I, I don't fool with you, I don't fit your criteria. So we good. We just pass each other by. I'm cordial. Hello, good evening, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it moving. I don't bother you. I'm not what you're looking for. I get it. I get it. You know, my pops told me when I was young, I was an ugly dude. He apologized and told me I had to work hard. So, <laughs> come on, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm not what you're looking for. I'm not a guy. I don't meet the, the, the income requirement. I get it. I'm not, I don't know you. I just, hello, how you doing? And I just keep it moving. Now, when I come here, I meet all the requirements here. I'm happy here. My blood pressure drops. I got tons of friends here, and I'm enjoying life. So if I don't fit your bill, you you know, you, I'm not what you're looking for. Hey, I wish you luck to find your happiness. I found mine. So mm-hmm. I, found, I tried to in the beginning. I tried, especially in Atlanta. Atlanta had all them peaches and shit running out there when I first went to Atlanta, and I was going to school out there, running across all of the Georgia peaches, sweet black women. Mm-hmm. I've never seen that in such a concentrated form. Mm-hmm. I tried to be the good guy. Anybody told you who know me, I still got good friends from back then. I'm, I'm trying to be the good guy. I try my best to be the good guy. And uh, uh, wanted to submit and looking for marriage and start families. And I mean, one time, this chick, man, uh, oh, it's like, I was in. Oh, she told me she, she, she wanted to go back to her ex boyfriend who was whooping her ass. She thought that was a better option for her. I was looking at her like, are you serious? You serious? And she was like, "Well, you know, he said he need me right now, but I, you know, I want to go back there." And you know, they told me, you know, me going to school or trying to get in the film game wasn't good enough for them. They better go back to somebody whooping their ass. Okay, cool. Amazing. Cool. The logic. 
Yes. You know, it's not what they're looking for. And you got guys, you know, I tell guys that, you know, you're going through that, man, you can get your passport and travel. I guarantee you when you step down in these foreign lands, uh, they who they uh, who you look who they looking for they looking for you. Mm-hmm. Looking for you you the prize at the end of the day man you just got to pop up that's it so a lot of brothers is finding that to be true and now the sisters are getting hurt and you know doing all that binge eating um you're sitting there and hogging out their best friends and swollen up down to their ankles can't see <laughs> no more kneecap shot and, <laughs> and you know and, and brothers is traveling and you, you've been to rio man they work the women fit game workout game and how they compete for men is impeccable, man. Aggressive. Yeah, they're aggressive. They get it in. And Very aggressive. In, they make me want it. I was just out walking the other day. Like, Sunday here is family day. Mm-hmm. So, jogging. They, they cut part of the streets off. for women riding their bikes and jogging shit. Maybe I was just walking. And then all of a sudden, I found myself skipping. I thought, damn, they moving. Shit. I need to move a little bit more, too, man. I started <laughs> to run, too. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's funny, man. When you're overseas, like in Medellin, I just have good day after good day after good day out here, you know? And you, you line up enough good days, you end up having a good life. And that's mm-hmm. like, it's not even all just about the women. It's just the environment, the culture, you know, being in South America, being a little closer to the equator where we where we was bred at. Um, no, GM, no GMO food here, you know, healthy food got time to exercise because you utilize like you said earlier um that american dollar that stretches a long way in south america um it's just a better lifestyle man on top of the beautiful women but i want to ask you real quick uh what are some of the big differences between women in brazil and women in the states oh you know that man yeah i know for the audience (laughs) both two of them together (laughs) you see it right you know uh uh, the plus size not all women in in america's plus size but they move Mm -hmm. Friendly and they fit, mm-hmm. uh, and, and that femininity, man. I, I just uh, to be around it, man. It, it, it it's puts you, it relaxes you, puts you in a different, puts you in a different mind state, man. And being around women that's feminine, and, and, and I see that shit. I enjoy, it, man. Every time I see it, it's like a rare, a rare bird that you don't see that often back in the states. And when I get here and I see that, man, and then you know, get back home, they got the bonnets on their head, going outside, pajamas on, and just like, don't give a shit. They just gave up. And you see that, how I'm attracted to that, how I'm gonna be attracted to that. Mm-hmm. You take time to you know fix yourself up and shit before you go outside. They they go outside. They go outside crazy, man. They go outside crazy. And women here, they don't you know they don't do that, man. And and, and the competition is stiff here for looking for good men. So once they know that they got a good man, you know they're gonna treat you. They're gonna treat you a way that you know that you're special. And, 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 be special to them and, and keep keep all others away. Mm-hmm. Keep all others away. So, you know, they, they cut out the games. They don't play the games. They're more direct here. In the States, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a lot different, especially with playing the games and stuff like that, man. I'm a little bit older, so I, I'm straightforward. And, I, and, and, and uh, I'm hands-on. I'm hands-on. Mm-hmm. I'm aggressive. I'm straightforward. And uh, our hair kind of fits. Uh, our hair fits my, my zone a lot better than, uh, than in the States, man. But in the States... Not knocking it because, you know, like I said, it gives me an opportunity to live life I want to live. I can mm-hmm. make money I want to make. I can do what I want to do. I can chop it up with brothers like yourself. A lot of these platforms and stuff that was created were created back in the States and stuff, man. So it, they, they have a lot to offer. They're just antisocial. You know, when it comes to relationships and families, shit is antisocial. And they look ways to make money off of that. And uh, off the pitfalls and downfalls of, of relationships and stuff, especially through the, through the child support hustle. And, um, uh, it's not for me, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Shout out to Barber World TV. I see you did an interview with him not too long ago. Oh, man. Good brother, man. Good brother. We chopped it up for a minute, man. And uh, uh, Good brother, man. He, he hit me up, man. He said, I heard you out here, man. I was like, well, I'm moving. You know, I'm doing some stuff right here. He, uh, you know, he waited. He, he waited till he got a hold of me, man. And we sat down. We chopped it up for hours, man. And shout out to him, too, man. Barber World TV, man. Had, had, had a joy doing the show, man. And uh, I'm gonna stay in contact with him, and hopefully we can do some stuff in the future as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shout out to Bubble World TV. He pull up everywhere. I saw him in Sasua. I run into him in Medellin. You know, he's all over the place, man. Shout out to Zodo. Yeah, Zodo, to Zodo, Zodo pull up everywhere, man. He, he hustles, man. He hustles. He puts mm-hmm. I like his product, man. And um, um, 
went through some of his stuff, man. So I'm a big fan of his product, and I'm looking. I'm going to support his product as well. Hopefully, mm-hmm. we'll put some stuff together in the future. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it on up in a second, man. But I want to ask you, brother, um, about the Black Man's Option uh, group trip that you guys just had. That that goes uh, every year, right? That's an annual trip that y'all have, right? Yeah, we 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 we, we have it uh, every year here, and um, we venture out as well. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, we, we, you know, Asia. We plan a trip to Africa. Uh, we we plan trips all over, but we, home. This is base for us. Um, Rio, uh, Brazil is base for us, so we always do a trip here, and then uh, looking to do two, three trips a year. And uh, we have a, a good admin group, man. We sit down and, and we, we plan it out. Uh, you know, we send somebody over to scout the locations and stuff to make sure everybody have a good time and, and you know where everybody's going, making sure everybody stays safe. So uh, Brazil, we do once a year. Uh, I know we're coming back in November. We're coming back in the Charles Tyler Beach Week. Uh, every year in November, we celebrate our brother and the work that he did. And the short time he was on, the short time he was with us. So we celebrate his life and we do what he loved, what he loved to do at, you know, with, with Brazil. So we do a nice little beach party for him in November. That's in November. But uh, using Memorial Day weekend, we may venture out somewhere else and in some other time frame, we venture out to other places. Nice, nice. And um, your your frustrated movies are available on your personal website, algrease.com, correct? No, Grease Films. Grease oh, Grease Films. Films. Okay, yes, right. Greasefilms.com. Uh, when I get back, I'm going to do some uh, some updating and stuff, man. I'm going to reach out to you too, man, and uh, uh, I'll get the information out to brothers, man. And, and, you know, I want brothers to get the information. Mm. And once they get the information, man, and they feel like it's something that they appreciate, man, just support it. Then I, you got my... um. Instagram, you should put my cash app, man. That's what needs to be up there, my cash app. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What's your cash app, bro? It, it's, it's Grease 12. Mm-hmm. You know, Dollar Side Grease 12, man. Yeah, put the cash app up there, man. So I uh, appreciate the support, and um, I'm going to have that available, man. Uh, I'm going to put that on BMO. I can put that on BMT and uh, reach out so brothers could get the information, man. So um, I'll, have that, I'll have that available, too, man, so they could watch it, get the information. And my, I just, I enjoy inspiring people, man. I, I love getting the calls that, you know, Dan Breeze, you know, you don't, you don't know me, man, but you saved my life. Uh, you don't know me, but you played a major part of my life. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm same thing, brother, by your work. And, and uh, you know, the reward for that will come later, man, but just to play a, a role in somebody's life um, where they help you help them find happiness and enjoyment, man, is, is a tremendous reward for me. And, um, you know, if something happened to me today, God forbid I'm healthy, but, you know, I wouldn't be forgotten, not just by my family, but uh, strangers as well that I played a role in their life. So that's that's what's real, that's what's up. That's what's real important. Yeah, man, you, like I said, you played a major role in, in my life because it came at the perfect time for me personally, man. Like I said, I was a frustrated black man like a lot of other brothers. And when I saw the video, like I said, I had no indication about Brazil. The only thing I knew about Brazil was City of God. You know, and that's not probably the best movie to watch and you think about going to Brazil, right? Uh, no, no. <laughs> but when I watched it and I, and I saw it, I was like, you know what? Let me let me check it out. And then somehow, some way, I was able to find Charles Tyler on YouTube right around the same time. I don't know if the algorithm, I don't know how that worked, but I was able to find uh, Charles Tyler as well. And I saw some of his content. And I said to myself, wait a minute, these brothers are going to Brazil. Uh, they enjoying it. And they, they're given an actual solution to a problem that we have in America. Uh, you know, so it really changed my life, man. I just want to thank you, uh, not only for uh, the movie, man, but for coming on to the show, brother. Oh, man, listen, anytime, man. You know, we go way back, man, and uh, good brothers, man. I just like to see Black Man Travels and being more. Maybe we can get together, sit down, we can talk about doing something together. Uh, we, we both have the same purpose. We have, mm-hmm. we have the same purpose in mind, and, and that's getting brothers out and about. And and and, and uh, helping them enjoy their life for us and not get caught up in, in you know in the nonsense in the matrix. So there's no reason why we can't work together. And you know uh, your platform, the BMO platform, and uh, we, we serve the same purpose, man. We're getting brothers out one one at a time, one at a time, man. So uh, anything, yeah. anything I can do to help you, man, and I'm sure likewise. And that's what it is at the end of the day, man. We're brothers, man. We're part of a brotherhood, a traveling brotherhood. And uh, we just want to get, we just want to free, free, free the minds, man. Get them out, let them experience for themselves, and then from there they can make their own decision if it's for them or if it's not for them. And 
uh, you know, that's it, but, but I, you know, I would like to do something, man. We could sit down, we get back to the States. I'm sure we could sit down together and work out something. Man. We could do something together, do something big, man. Do something epic. Most definitely, bro. Most definitely. We definitely going to chop it up about that, but you're exactly right. We are brothers. Uh, we are countrymen. We travel in the world. We have other brothers. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah, yeah, we, we, it's, it's enough of us where we, we, you know, we, we need to take it to the next level. And mm-hmm. man, not just traveling and in and out, but we could do it and sit down, and talk together, man, and come up with something, some, something some substantial. Come up with something substantial and shit, man, and we can, we can work it out, man. So at the end of the day, we just want to see everybody happy. I just love to see brothers enjoy themselves, man. I have brothers, uh, we, you know, we, we promote our, our little rookie class and, uh, you know, see brothers with smiles and cheese and Cheesy smiles on their face, man. And, and, you know, they ain't smile like that in years. And to capture that stuff, man, to see brothers happy, man. And because, you know, back in the state, they take it for granted the trauma that we go through, some of the shit that we go through. They just take, you know, we taught to, you know, just suck it up and die with your boots on and you be all right. And that's not, not it all the time, man. Sometimes we need an outlet. And that's why they frustrated was so successful that they offered an outlet to get brothers to come out and travel. Walking through the process of getting uh, passports. Uh, uh, good brother Charles Tyler, Tyler was doing a, a passport challenge. They had to challenge brothers out to go out there and get their passport, man. It's like $128 or something, man. Just put them kicks down and, and, and go out and get your passport. So he did challenges, man. Got brothers to get their passport. And then, you know, from the group, you get brothers coming back saying, man, I found my wife over here. I found my wife over here. I'm happy. And you know what? The biggest stereotype they, they, they tell you is that most of the women from these states want to come to America. Most of them you need don't want to go to America. They want to stay mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. They, want, they want to stay here. And brothers know that, and that's why they figured out, damn, you know, how can I buy me a piece of property here? Or you know what? Uh, the property, you know, is this amount of money, and shit, my money goes this far. Oh, that's nothing. I can get that. You know, I'm looking at the Boy. market in New York City, shit, forget that. But I pay mm-hmm. rent, ridiculous. I mean, just put, I paying rent is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, brothers is working together, man, and, and finding out ways to buy, uh, buy property and rent it out and do stuff, man, becoming real successful and enjoying life, traveling and getting out of them nine to fives and, and getting their freedom back, man. So that's that's what the movement is all about, man. So I look forward to doing something with you, brother. Most definitely, man. Like traveling is definitely therapy for the soul. I want to catch a super chat before we go. Uh, shout out to the great. Pretender, but ten dollars super chat. He says weekly therapy. Just wanted to say thank you to the brothers like you. You get brothers hope. Literally out here saving lives. We appreciate yeah. that. Brother. Yeah, I'm gonna put that on my tombstone. But I was out here saving lives. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I get I get messages. Brothers tell me, man, be careful, Greg. We don't want nothing to happen to you, man. I feel like somebody gonna come out there and do something to you, man. I, I'm not. I, I ain't worrying about none of that shit at all, man. I'm enjoying life. Uh, my here in Brazil and uh, enjoying life, man. So uh, I want I want other brothers to come out there, man, and have this experience as well. So anything I can do to help brothers uh, to, to, to to get to this point, you know, uh, you can DM me, man. Reach out to me. I, I'm not one of them dudes. Uh, you know, uh, it may take me a day or two to get back to you, but I get back to you. I get back to you, man. I was trying to put your Instagram up real quick, before you, before we go. Throw that up there real quick, man. And I gotta come out there, man. I gotta come out there and holler at you one day, uh, out there in Rio. Yeah, we gotta connect out there. Uh, listen, man. Um, when I get back to the states, uh, I'm gonna do a little work in Atlanta. I don't know mm-hmm. if you're in Atlanta, but if you're in, uh, most definitely, I'll reach out to you. And uh, like I said, we need to sit down, man. And uh, like I said, we we we're brothers with a common goal. So there's no need why we can't sit down and work out something together, man, and, 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 and you know, come together. Brotherhood, man. This is all about brotherhood. All about this brotherhood, man. You should see the faces of the uh, locals here. They see us coming. They, they, they just looking. Damn, you put that on. Man, this, this is not what we, we, we hear about them on the news. You know what I mean? They're killing and having a good time. And we was out there. And we just out in the club chilling, man. And the dude over there found out we was from America, man. And he just sent us, he sent us bottles, just kept sending us bottles over there all night. Mm-hmm. All night. At the end of the night, man, he ran up a hundred thousand dollar tab in their money and, and, and we asked just sending us bottles. Wow. And holding up signs, you know, this is for our friends in the USA brothers. 
and they came over and they party with us and they just showed us love. Mm-hmm. Nobody was standing there mean mugging us or who, who them dudes think they all come in our country. They showed love. Mm-hmm. They came over. I got, you know, I got some footage, man. I'm going to share in a different video, man. But they came over, showed love, spent, sent bottles all night long. They just sent bottles. Brothers was tapping out. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, just tapping out for all the love they were showing. And, and that's what I want guys to experience. When you, when you come out of different countries like that, man, and uh, you get around, you appreciate it. You appreciate it. And, and brothers need to feel some love, man. And we think, you know, back in the state, we don't need to feel love and, and the trauma and the shit that we go through. We just got to accept that. Brothers need some love, too, man. You come out here, you just get some love, man, and, and it makes you a different person, a better person. Very true, bro. Shout out to my brother, Nate, in your state. He says, we can't be stopped. The goal of leaving the Matrix, let's go, brothers. Shout out yeah. to my brother for the follow super chat. Yeah. Most yeah. definitely. And you make a very you make a very valid point before you go, bro. You make a very valid point, man, on brothers not first of all, most brothers don't know they need therapy. That's number one. Then most brothers won't go seek therapy. But to kind of make a caveat around all that, man, when you travel, I know when I was in Brazil, I had a life-changing experience out there when I was going up the um to the Christ Redeemer. Uh, and, and it hit me and a friend of mine at the same time. And we just sitting there looking like it was almost like all that bad energy, all that bad blood, all that ancestral problems that we had. It all just kind of just shed right then and there because I was on some other soil. I was in a different environment. You know, I was around a different culture of people, still Afro people, but different culture of people. And that's when I knew that I was going to dedicate my life to helping brothers travel the world, man, because if it helped me, I know it's going to help other brothers, man. And there's no money in the world. You can't pay for it. You know, you just got to travel. And it's going to hit you at a separate time, man, but it's real. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think real, man. For me, it was one time, man, I, I was out here solo by myself, mm-hmm. just, just hanging out and uh, pretty, uh, pretty frustrated, just hanging out. And um, I, met the, I met a guy, I met a dude, I met a dude, man, real cool dude. And uh, he was like, yo, man, listen. I'm married. My wife got a beautiful, a beautiful sister, man. You can come, come eat dinner at my house. My wife gonna cook. Come to the house. You can, you know, meet my sister-in-law. All this shit, man. I was like, well, listen, man. You know, I'm from New York, man. So I guard always there. I was like, well, you know, tell you what, when we go out to eat at the restaurant, I don't know where you live at, man. I ain't trying to right. come out to the restaurant, man. Right, right. To the restaurant. What is uh, you know, his sister-in-law, gorgeous too. You one line, one line. And uh, we had a good time. We partied and stuff for the couple of days I was here. And when I was leaving, go back to the when I was leaving, go back to the airport. They showed up to the, to to my Airbnb to, to take me to the airport. Man, the whole family they just came out and sent me off. And I was like, Wow, you you, you know y'all ain't got to do that. They was like, No, you are brother, man. We had a good time with you, man. We, you don't need no cab. We take you to the airport. We're gonna take you to the airport, man. They came and showed me off, man. And I, I was that. That little instance there, man, you know, of showing some love, man. I was like, wow, wow, you ain't had to do this. No, we, you know, you our brother now. We, we family now. We family. And uh, showed me off to the airport. Came out to the airport. Drove me, hung around until it was time for me to leave. I had to go to the date, man. And uh, I don't know, you know, you guys, brothers, always talk about that ride back to the airport. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's like that's like Green Mile. That's like mm-hmm. walking, <laughs> taking that ride back, man. So, you know, they, they soften that blow by, by coming in and to escort me off to the airport, man. And I really appreciate that. Because when you get here, you see us and, and they view you as family. Mm-hmm. They, they view you as family. Brothers, they call you their brothers, man. You family now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. One of the most beautiful places in the world. The most beautiful people, man. I can't wait to get back. Most definitely. Right, well, brother. You, you got you to gotta take me out to Columbia with you so I can chop it up out there, man. Man, whenever you're ready, you know I got you. It, 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 listen, I'm, I'm never gonna be ready. You just gonna have to tell me, man. Like, yo, <laughs> these, these dates, because if you let you leave it to me, I'm gonna book a flight right back here. And <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, nah, come on out here, man, when you can, man. Because you come out here, I'm gonna come out there and holler at you and Rico. Yeah, no, nah, we just gotta play or something, man. Because yeah. you know, you leave it. I'm telling you, leave it to me, man. My hands get stuck, man. When I get on that thing, I just. But bro, you, you can come. You can come. Here first, then go to Rio. Well, you know what? I think they, I think they make you fly back to Panama or somewhere else because I think you can't take a direct flight yet. Yeah, we can work. We we'll, we'll work that out, man. We'll, right, right. We'll work that out, but uh, yeah, just uh, break bread together, man, and um, brotherhood, man. 
you know, I interviewed a guy, shout out to my bro, DJ uh, Jay Brown, and he's traveled all over the world. He, he's he's from France, but he, Japan, Asia, Thailand, everywhere. He's been to a lot of countries. He said his, his two favorite cities are Medellin and Rio de Janeiro. I believe. So that, that, let, that let you know we in some fantastic cities right now. We're a little yeah, to give you, a, you know, I, I got you. Got teased about it, man. But you know, in Thai, I was, we was out in Thailand, man. They would tell me I wasn't black enough in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't black like your friends. So they asked me, "Yo, you green? You go fuck Thailand?" <laughs> <laughs> That's like, what's up. Hell wrong with y'all, man. They, they. I mean, listen. Uh, any uh, dark, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but any dark skin brothers, man, that. You know, six, six, two, six, three, five, biggest size. You need to go to Thailand. You God in Thailand. You are mm-hmm. God in Thailand. You want to stuff. I'm talking the darker you are. You, you sit, people tease you about being in the states by being so black. Take your ass to Thailand, mm-hmm. and you, will, you are God in Thailand, and you will be loved in Thailand. You would have an awesome time in Thailand. Man, you know what? I, I want to go to Thailand. They, I think they opened it back up, but you gotta have a COVID shot though. Yeah, right now, you know, uh, that's just me. I ain't, I ain't with the shots yet. I, I'm still on the side, still in line looking in. Um, trying to figure out, you know, how this thing is going to go, how it's going to affect me and stuff, man. Um, I did my bout with it. I did my bout with it in time uh, with, with the COVID thing. So I don't know if I, you know, uh, I, I, you know I did my regular checkup. I am seem to be fine. Uh, just the science ain't out there enough for me, man. We just, you know, we all fall in line like sheep, you know. Put the mask on, take a shot, do this. And I'm laughing because I'm on the airplane and you know, the lady's like, Oh, your mask fell off. Cause you gotta have your mask on. I'm like, what the fuck? They, they drinking water with their mask off. What do you think? COVID take time out when you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey y'all eating. People mm. oh COVID, oh they eating, don't mess with them now while they eating, let's take time out. No, it's, what the hell y'all talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know, we just fall in line like sheep, not not to you know go off. Yeah, they that. already they already retracted saying that the, that the masks don't even work. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And and now I'm just waiting on the just waiting on the um the research and the literature to come out about these shots, how these shots are working because I don't think all of it's being reported accurately Smart about man. the harm and stuff that it's causing. Because in, you know, I'm I'm in New York. They offering free weed. They were offering free tickets, <laughs> lottery tickets, all kinds of. <laughs> Oh man, that lets you know something wrong, bro. They start offering free free forties and stuff. You don't have to. You don't. You trying. You can't give it away for free. Something wrong when you telling us a free shot come and get it. And people still won't take it. If it's so good, they'll steal it from you. And uh, you should. The racket has go. They offering everything because weed is legal now in New York. They like yo, come in, come and get your shot. We give you a dime bag. You, you get paid. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh man. Some just don't sit right about that, bro. I'll, I'll hold out, man. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right, man. I just took, matter of fact, uh, I just took a uh, took a test today while I was here. My shit is negative. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I'll, I'll hold out, man, before y'all line me up and shoot me for shit. And then two years later, they reporting. I'm sorry, everybody that got the shot got got these issues and all that shit. I'll wait and see what's going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's so many disclaimers with the shot. If something go wrong, you, don't even get, you can't even sue them. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, I, you miss me with that. Miss me with that. Uh, shout out to MX Explorer, uh, one for the four dollars ninety nine cent super chat. I appreciate that, brother. He says BMO, BMT that's DJP with thumbs up. Bro. I appreciate that, brother. That's shout out to Black Man Success for the twenty dollars super chat. I really appreciate that, brother. He says I'm a U.S. veteran and owner. How much money do I need to open a nightclub in Rio or Medellin? Is a hundred K or a hundred twenty thousand enough? Well, I know in Medellin is definitely enough, depending on what size of nightclub you want to be. But I'm not sure about Rio. You think you can answer that? Uh, uh? That's that's enough, man. But you know, um, when it, what we got to realize and understand is business is warfare. Mm-hmm. Warfare. This is not like in the states where well, in the states it's warfare too. Because if you try to open up a business in the Jewish community. Or a white community, you see how you get treated. Mm-hmm. The same, and how we allow people to come in to the inner cities and just open up anything in the service. So mm-hmm. I know in Brazil, man, if you're looking to open a nightclub, and you got to keep in mind, it's warfare. It's not racist. It's not racism. It's warfare. You're taking dollars out of somebody else's pocket, and you want them to patronize your business. 
So before you just run to open up a club here, I would come out, try to rub some elbows with some cats and, and, and get a clear understanding because the business fact of it is totally different because you're competing for people's dollars. And people look at it that you're taking dollars from this spot and you're going to your spot. And you're not Brazilian and you don't know the Brazilian way. Uh, it may cause some obstacles for you. So, But I, I would do some research first, come out and visit, meet some guys, talk to some people. To some, some business owners and stuff, man, because uh, you know it's it's, it's warfare for the, competing for that dollar. So I I, I would take caution, but it, it could be done because there's a lot of guys that own uh, uh, properties and clubs and stuff here that are not from here. But Brazil has that corrupt corrupt element to it, and uh, from from politicians and, and officials and stuff. So you don't want to be out here by yourself. Then you know you're just gonna go here and, and get the bag and take it up. These boys are stopping to tell you you're gonna have to split that bag up. So <laughs> if you yeah. have stuff out here. So especially when you don't have uh, a group of other guys around you, uh, Brazilian guys around you, and, and find yourself with, with the right people, man, so you can uh, be successful. So I, I would proceed with caution with that. I don't know how about Manny Jean, but they just, they don't they, they frown upon just anybody coming out here keeping up their bread. Mm -hmm. Um it's the same medicine. Uh, you make a very good valid point. The thing about it is when you're doing business out here, probably anywhere in South America, there's the government and then there's the, the government. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, so you got to make sure, like, like Al said, to rub the right palms and have the elbows with the right people. Cause in some people's eyes, you are taking business away. Now there's brothers out here with businesses, um, clubs and bars out here in Medellin, um, but they know how to talk to the right people. So, I would suggest the money part is fine. You probably got enough money with that. Um, but I would move out here for a year, learn the language. Uh, if you're in Medellin, come to the BMT office. We can chop it up and we can put you in connection with the right people. Um, otherwise, they're going to just take your money and run. And ain't nothing you can do about it. And it's not even, like, like Al said, it's not even a race thing. It's just the fact that you're not Colombian. You're not Paisa. Paisa is the, 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 the people that you know pretty much live in Medellin. That's their culture, that they tribe, if you want to say. Um, and I'm sure like, it's like that in other places in the world too, because I met a, I met a white guy actually in Rio, uh, in Copacabana Beach, a German white guy who got screwed over for millions of dollars on a real estate deal in Italy by the Italian mob, which is the government. That's what I was trying to tell you. There's the government, then there's the government. You see what I'm saying? And uh, he was white, they white, but he wasn't Italian. And they just took like $20 million from him and there's nothing he can do about it. So you yeah. definitely want to be careful when you're doing business overseas, most definitely. That's that's what I, you know, uh, chopping up with people, local people, talking to people, man. And they'll tell you stories I do is get ripped off, even buying houses out here. Somebody say the house, but you don't control the land. You don't own the land. Mm -hmm. the somebody like, yo, what you doing on my land? You're like, yo, I bought this house. Shit, you own my land. You own my land, though. You don't have to move. You don't have to get out of here. And you're like, wait, I got the house. The house don't mean shit. You own my land. Mm -hmm. You got to go through the proper channels. And uh, talk to you know we we talk to somebody we help navigate you through that man you know, exactly uh, yeah. we got uh, guys in place that if you look at we had several brothers just came out and bought properties out here that navigate you get your requirements get your CPF number you, you go through that process how to open up a bank account here how to get money in here so you would want to uh, talk to guys and get that stuff set up instead of thinking you're just gonna show up. With a hundred thousand dollars and, and like you're on buying the spot and it's gonna be all good. It is it's not especially a nightclub that draws a lot of attention and makes a lot of money and, and running the nightlife, you can you're gonna run the, you're gonna run it up against some obstacles with that. There you go. Well brother, I appreciate you coming on the show. I ain't gonna hold you too much longer, man. Salute. Yeah, it's getting night out here, so you know you got a lot of things going on. Right. <laughs> all right, brother. Appreciate you coming on, brother. Anytime, Aaron, man. Like I said, we're gonna chop it up, man. And we've got to really sit down and discuss about doing something together, man. Being BNT and the BMO, man. We are brothers with the same uh same goal in sight. So uh there's no need why we can't work together. Let's connect, man. Let's do it. Let's yeah. build. Yeah, shout out to you, man. Be safe out there. All right, peace, bro. You peace. too.